Welcome to my chow line. I'm Tracy Lingle. Join me as we serve up dishes that are sure to please. We will also hear stories related to food and military service. Today, we will hear my story from my time in service while we cook a classic, pulled pork. Join me. All right, well, here we go. We got two pork shoulder butts, or maybe just one big one. Uh, from Costco here. We're going to trim this up. It's uh, about a 17 and a half pound, but we're going to open it up, trim it up, dry it off, and then season it up, and then we'll get our fire going. Yeah, I, I live in Georgia, so this is going to be a classic because, you know, the South, we love barbecue. Love pulled pork. Yeah, it's two separate pieces. And these have already had the bones removed. Which means you got to treat them a little differently, but not too bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to season these up after we dry them off. We're just pat and dry to get the packaging water and stuff off. Might trim that piece off there. That doesn't look good. I'm sorry, I was supposed to have that light on. Completely forgot. Might make it easier for y'all to see. Might make it easier for me to see. You got the fat cap on one side. What we'll do is we'll probably even the even it up a little bit when we trim it. But the fat cap is okay. We want some of that fat. We don't want all of it though. Sure you sharpen your knife before you start doing all this stuff that way you don't end up with a tears and all that stuff in it So I started this channel because uh, I wanted to make sure that I was able to express some of the things I like to do with outdoor cooking, show everybody how I cook things. Um, when I've cooked for groups and cooked at uh, events, um, I always get people asking me, how do you do it? You know, how do you, you know especially when cooking for large groups or whatever, how can you um, get uh, all the work, all the food done and get it tasting good too. And so thought I'd impart some wisdom maybe and see if it catches on and people like the way I cook, they like my food. So figured I'd share it with y'all. There might be people that can't, don't have access to it. So, and see right here, I'm gonna get that out. It looks like that 
pig had a little bit of bruising. All right. Set this aside. All right. So with barbecue, there's lots of th people talk about binders, all that kind of stuff. I have used binders. I do use binders. I don't always use binders. Um, if you have the time to let it to season and let it sit for a good hour to two hours, you don't really need a binder personally. The binder does nothing but help keep the seasonings on the meat till it can adhere for the cook. Binders are usually for people who are going real fast and got to get it done, got to get it done, got to get it done. Um, where you're going to throw it right on the smoker immediately after you season it. So like in maybe a competition setting, I'm not sure. I've never done competition, so I can't speak to that. But if you're cooking for a large group and you got to get, get a bunch of them on, then you might want to use a binder. The binder is usually use oil. Classic is yellow mustard. Um, but the binder, all it is, is it's to help bind the seasoning, whatever seasoning you're going to use to the meat. So that way it doesn't fall off right as it starts cooking. If you have the opportunity to let it sweat and when you season it, the salts that's in the seasonings, the salt will help bring moisture to the, to the surface, draw out some of that moisture. It'll solidify, and or it'll actually make the seasonings wet, and then it'll solidify and make a, a coating, and it'll create its own binder that way. But you have to let it sit at least 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes, for it to start to do that before you put it on the smoker. But that way, it has time. I find, personally, if you're going to do a cook, you don't have to use the binder. You can use... Um, seasonings right on it let it sit while you're doing that go ahead start your fire get your grill up to temperature because it's going to take 30 minutes at least for that to happen so while you're so you prep the meat first get the fire going bingo you've had the opportunity for the for the meat to set create that nice shield and also help extract some of that moisture with the salt and create that nice seasoning on it and then you get it on the smoker and you're good to go but I'm going to show you all using a binder today just because I want to show what it is with a binder. Love the sound of condiments going everywhere. It's amazing, isn't it? We're all 13 year olds. Alright, so I'm take and I'm gonna go ahead and put some inside because the bones are already out, that gives an extra opportunity to put some seasonings inside the meat to allow more penetration. <laughs> And uh, of all that good flavor, and we're just going to get a nice coating all over everything. Same thing to this one. You're not looking to make these things super yellow. You're just looking to get some some uh, sticky liquid on the outside so that when you put your seasonings on it has something to stick to all right so today um, we got <clears throat> Some honey hog barbecue seasoning from Meat Church. I've also got some honey hog hot. I'm going to do one of each. Um, my family doesn't like a lot of spicy, but from what I understand, this isn't that spicy. 
but I've, I haven't tried it yet. I want to try it out. I just found it at the local academy sports. They actually started carrying it um, before I could only get the honey hog, and I've I've, I've been using this one pretty good. Uh, another good seasoning to use would be grill your ass off. It's got a great pork seasoning. Um, I don't have any of that, otherwise I'd be using it today. Um, but it's harder to get. I got to order it online. It's not at my local the local store when I'm in the store to pick it up. So Meat Church is in um, uh, Academy and also at Lowe's. Some Lowe's. I don't know which ones, but in the grilling section. So we'll go ahead and get the hot one out of the way. We'll do this one the hot. One of the good things about it, you can be very generous with it because it's gonna, you want that little bit of crust to form on it. Always season well. Don't be afraid, don't be bashful. I think that's one of the biggest things that people don't do is they don't season enough, especially on a large cut of meat like this because the reality is, is the center of the, of the meat is not going to get as much of the flavor from the seasoning. So what, what you're wanting is when this goes to get shredded later, the bark that's going to form on the outside of this meat is what you're going to have mixed with your, with your barbecue with the other portions of the meat that are just juicy. So it will help add to it. We're going to go in here and get some of this on the inside. What we're also going to do is because these bones are out, I'm going to truss it up just to keep it together so it doesn't just like start falling apart on the grill. All right. But I'll do that in just a minute. I may have to touch up the seasonings when I do that, but I wanted to go ahead and get the seasonings inside of it first. So now we're going to use the honey hog on this one. And I'm seasoning the fat cap side first because that's going to be the side that's going to be down on the, on the smoker. I like using the smoker for just about everything. You can use it as an oven. I, I, I can cook just about anything out here between my smoker, the gas grill, and uh, charcoal with a Dutch oven. I've been cooking outside most of my life, and I love it. One, I like the ambiance. I've got birds chirping. The sun's the sun's been up for a little bit, but you can sit out here with your coffee. The weather's nice. It's cool right now. And um, the only time I don't like cooking outside is when it is 100 degrees and 100% humidity here in Georgia. I did not cook in the military. I was a petroleum supply specialist. And uh, so I spent most of my time pumping gas when we were authorized fuel because I was in a reserve unit and I, did, I had fuel trucks, but I wasn't authorized to carry fuel in the fuel trucks because, you know, the government. But I did deploy to Saudi Arabia. I volunteered for a deployment. <laughs> I just happened to do it in the, some would say the right or wrong year. I was in Saudi Arabia for 9-11, so.
Wild times, wild times. All right, so we got these seasoned up. I'm gonna truss them with uh, some um, some twine. I didn't realize they were boneless. I didn't read the package very well. I just grabbed them um, from Costco. But um, I will get them bound up with butcher twine and I'll uh, show y'all what it looks like bound, uh, bound up and then I'll uh, get the fire going. All right, well, we've got our smoker running about 250. We're gonna try to keep it running about 250 to 275. Um, for the duration of this cook. This cook is going to probably, probably be uh, six or seven hours. So just want to make sure you understand that when you're getting into it. I think anything worth doing is worth doing well and whether it takes a lot of time or not. So, um, and I enjoy this process. You can use a um, something like a Traeger or a Rectech and that way it can, it'll keep the temperature for you. Um, I like the old school traditional method, uh, wood and charcoal. I do a combination of both, a little bit of charcoal for the heat, and I usually try to use a hardwood charcoal, and then I, uh, and then I use, I'm using hickory for the smoke. But we're gonna go ahead and get these on. And I've trussed them up, you can see with a little bit, just not super tight, but just enough to keep them from, from uh, falling apart. one right here leave a little bit of room between them for uh for thing uh, this is my my honey hot this is my honey and then we'll get a water tray i like putting a little water tray in here for moisture keeps it uh nice and moist in there steams it a little bit and then we're going to Close this up and let it ride, and we'll, we'll check every uh, every 45 minutes or so to an hour. We're going to check it, or maybe come back in two hours um, and check it. And we will also be spritzing it with a um, with a mixture of apple cider vinegar and Worcestershire and a little bit of water, just to keep them moist. But we're also looking to get a little bit of that bark on them. So. As you see the outside start drying, you're just going to try to keep it tender enough so that way it doesn't like burn and, and crust up too bad, but you also want that crust on it. So we want to get that going. Uh, we'll let that ride for another two hours and we'll come check on it. All right, what we have here, I've got a um, just a bottle I've made up uh, of uh, one part Worcestershire, one part water, two parts apple cider vinegar. I use it for all my pork when I'm doing it, when I'm smoking it. Let's see what we got here. It's been about two hours now. Okay, we got some good color, it looks like. So we'll go ahead and give it a spritz. Alright, now we're going to continue to let this ride, keeping it 250 to 275. We're going to keep checking it every couple hours and uh, keep the fire going and uh, make sure we get good color on it. Once the internal temperature gets about, about three hours, four hours in, we'll probably look at what we might need to wrap it or not. Um, but I think we're, we're going to be good for their two or three hours before we need to worry about wrapping. But um, um, just uh, keep monitoring the temperature, keep spritzing it every hour or two, and uh, we'll get back to it. All right, so what we're gonna do is, uh, for a side for this barbecue that we're gonna be making, uh, we're gonna make some baked beans. Um, you can always just take straight from the can and warm them up if you want, but I like to put a little extra into what I do. So we're going to take these cans, but we're also going to take some onions and some bacon uh, and some. we'll use some of the seasoning. I've also got some of the Meat Church uh, Texas sugar uh, that I think I'm going to use with, the, with this. But uh, first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of oil in my Dutch oven little uh, skillet here, deep skillet. Because what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to put the onions and the bacon in this, and then we're going to set it in the smoker and let that 
cook down some, let the onions cook down and, and sweat out and, and let the, the bacon brown and crisp up a little bit before we add the baked beans and the seasonings. So we're just going to dice this up. We're gonna dice up, but I, I, we're gonna dice both of these up and put them in here. But it, I wanted to make sure I let everybody know that one of the main reasons that I do most of the stuff that I do, whether I go overboard, some people say I might go go a little doing more than this isn't required for a meal. I don't think it's more than required. I think it's I think it's required if you want to serve good food. Because you can have decent food with just basic stuff, but I, I want to take the extra step and put some care, thought, and effort into the meal. Um, it can still be a simple meal, but it can be done with a little extra attention to detail, a little extra, the little extra stuff. Because that's, that's what you end up tasting in the food that makes it gives that extra little uh, oomph. Um, but one of the things you'll see me chopping up is you leave the, st the, the root ball on and that prevents a lot of the, the crying and the tearing up of the onions. So if you can leave that on until you're almost done, you will be better off in the long run. Outside doesn't really matter as much but if you're in the kitchen it's a great tip so I've got two small sweet onions I like going with the sweet onions when you are doing this just for the it's gonna be you want those beans to be a little sweet a little tangy we're gonna probably use a little bit of that that hot honey hog in this as well just to kind of give it a little bit of temp because I, I like I like a little bit of spice um, but not everybody in my family does so I want to put a hint of it in there but not a lot not everybody's fond of the onions but it just adds another layer of flavor and texture And when we get to the bacon, we're just going to dice it up, the bacon, as small as we can. Don't have to be super small because, you know, we want this to be meaty. Um, I like a lot of protein with my vegetables and my beans because, you know, I prefer meat over uh, potatoes any day. And not everybody likes bacon. I mean, we could do, we could do this barbecue, pulled, this pulled pork, we could do it differently. We could not want to use pork, we could use chuck roast or a brisket. It's just, if you're gonna do a brisket, I like to do a brisket, like a regular brisket. Uh, I like to do it like um, out in Texas. But um, barbecue is not a bad way to have brisket either chopped up or or, uh, or shredded pulled I've got six cans of baked beans here we may or may not be able to use all of those in this, but I just got them because I have them here available. And then we're going to take the bacon and we're going to just cut it up into uh, small little pieces.
good old Costco bacon. We're looking for bite-sized pieces because as it cooks, it'll it'll get smaller, of course. We're going to smoke it and then uh, stir it every so often when we go in and spritz the, the pork. And these don't have to be neat and tidy unless you're OCD and you need, to, need them to be. And that's perfectly fine. I, mean, I could use the shears and cut them up into small pieces too. But I already got the knife out. I already got the... I already got it going. One of the uh, things I remember most about being in the military was the uh, in the dining facilities when I was in Saudi Arabia um, at Prince Sultan Air Base, where the uh, the omelets that we could get we just had to put up with the smell of the the TCN. You could smell from over the counter that was cooking it. TCN is third country national. Usually uh, we had guys there from Pakistan. We had guys there from um, the Philippines, all over. It was just a term that they used whenever they talked about civilians on post that were in roles around there was just TCNs. That way we knew that they were not from the United States. Most of them were from third world countries. A lot of them did good stuff. Hygiene just was, wasn't one of the primary concerns in that environment. All right, so now we got that. We'll use a little bit of the, the honey hog hot and then some of the sugar, Texas sugar. And we're going to let that go just like that. We're going to stir it up a little bit. All right, so we're going to take that. We're going to stick this in the smoker. Maybe got some nice bark on the outside of those pork shoulders, butts. So, all right. Well, now that that's on, we'll let that brown up. We'll check on it in a little bit. All right. So we've got some uh, good color here on our onions. They're sweated out. We've got the bacon's cooked up real good. Now we're going to add our baked beans until this thing is full to the top. Yeah, about four cans is all we could really get in here, but that's okay. This is going to be really good. Stir that up. Right towards the end of the cook, we'll add a little bit of more, a little more brown sugar to it, just to, or some maple syrup, um, just to kind of give it a little sweetness, extra on top of what it already has. Because I like my baked beans almost like a dessert, a little sweet and a little salty, a little savory. 
and spicy. All right, those stirred up real good. All right, let's check the temps on our. Uh, we are at. 154 and 153 52 so these need to keep stay on a little bit longer before we can wrap them so we're going to keep those going let me spritz them it smells wonderful wonderful all right, we'll check back in a little bit. All right, now it's, uh, I wanna sit down and talk to you guys for a minute. Um, I'm gonna light a cigar up. It's a Warfighter tobacco cigar, 50 cal garrison. Really good cigars. Warfighter tobacco, great company. Part of what I like about outdoor cooking is uh, the opportunity to sit outside, enjoy a cigar, enjoy a drink, enjoy a beer, enjoy a Coke, whatever it is you like, and enjoy the outdoors. Um, enjoy the aroma of the fire. Um, I, I just really enjoy being outside and cooking. Um, but I want to let you know, I, was, I, I am a, a, a veteran. I was Army Reservist for um, six years uh, and then another year and a half in the Air National Guard. Um, but uh, in my time in, the reserve unit I was in was a combat engineer unit. Um, and we, uh, we had a training at Fort Polk, Louisiana. And it was field exercise. Um, with Op 4 and all that kind of stuff. And there was a bunch of other units there with us. There was an MP unit uh, on our right, and then a, uh, uh, I don't remember who the other guys on the left were. They wouldn't, they didn't bother us as much as the MPs did. But uh, yeah, being the engineers, we had all the equipment and we dug out all the the foxholes and dug out all the in, in trenches and the uh, trenches and stuff for the trucks to sit in and all that stuff and um, op four hit us one night and uh, you know standard protocol was to go out and shut generators off and all that stuff well the MPs <laughs> hearing our generator and the guy goes out to turn the generator off the moment the guy turns the generator off the MPs start lighting him up with his miles gear they start shooting at him and he was bobbing and weaving trying to get back <laughs> but uh that night they hit our uh kitchen trailer and um <laughs> supposedly we lost all of our ability to be able to have a hot meal so we all got and it's january it's already cold and uh so what we were supposed to have the next morning was supposed to be uh eggs and waffles so we didn't get the eggs we got the waffles and they were frozen and so <laughs> we had to try and figure out a way to eat frozen waffles Is so being the engineers we came up with all kinds of ways man we we had um, a rotation going on top of the pot belly stoves in the in the in the gp medium we had we had guys um warming the dozers up and getting you know setting the waffles in uh, uh on that we had the guys finding mre heater packs and trying to warm them up that way <laughs> They still didn't taste good. I mean, it's government food anyway. Never tasted good. But it was just funny that, you know, just what everybody was going through to heat up their waffles because they were freaking hockey bucks. <sighs> no syrup because apparently the syrup got hit. And, uh, you know, just fun stuff. We had guys 
breaking equipment out there. Some guy was was driving a Humvee through the through the area he wasn't supposed to, and he hit one of the trenches. Didn't see the trench, hit it, and broke the transmission. I mean, broke it right in half, and fluid goes everywhere. And then the engineers, like we were, we had to go ahead and you know because the way the EPA rules were for the military, we have to go and dig up all the dirt around where it leaked. Plus, we have to get the the truck out and fun times fun times but uh yeah we like to use our MRE heater packs for other things too just all kinds of just the ways you have to improvise with your food whenever you get it because you know MREs whether it's you know we always saved the heater packs we never used them because it, it used water and we didn't want to use up the water so we would uh, save them and for when times when we had water we would use the trucks or we would find alternate ways the, the pot belly stoves or whatever to heat up our food one of the guys found the, the top of the truck on a really sunny day and put them up there on top and let them warm up But, like I said before, one of my most memorable things was just enjoying the, the defects at Prince Sultan Air Base was the, uh, the omelets we had. Um, those were really, really good. Um, I had to have an omelet. I think I probably had an omelet three times a day for almost a week straight at one point because none of the other food sounded good. But, I mean, it's not hard to screw up an omelet. But of course the government can, but they were using real eggs. But yeah, that was that was a uh, guys trying to eat salads, trying to lose weight. It's like, man, we're running. <laughs> Neighbors trying to see how much muscle they have in their car, compensating for stuff. But uh yeah fun times it's just thinking back on all the all the memories you have in time of service that they have revolve around food because generally it does at some point usually in down times or um uh whenever the uh you get back to barracks or when you're in the field and everything's really bad you you might find that one meal that tasted really good um because it was hot and fresh um or home cooked almost guys scrounging and finding stuff but yeah, I just wanted to share that with you share that experience I had with you I mean there's other stuff I'm sure everybody's got multiple of you guys that have served in in service so if you want to share um, or you would like me to share on this channel any of your stories from uh, when you were in the your good bad or a funny stories about food um, comment in the video. Send me a message. I'll, uh, I'll I might share it the next uh, the next time I post the video. You might see your your story on there. But uh, I appreciate everyone. Remember those deployed. And uh, man, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thanks for enjoying this cook with me. Uh, it smells wonderful. I wish y'all could smell it. But uh, I. Uh, I would love to to continue to cook for you guys. Thanks for coming to my chow line. We'll uh, we'll get back to the meat in a minute and check on it whenever it's done. But I'm gonna enjoy this cigar. I'm gonna enjoy this drink. Till next time. All right. So now we're going to check the 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 pork butts, and I think they're ready to go. We're gonna give them a quick temperature check and uh, see if we can get ready to wrap them up. One sixty four, one sixty two. All right, so I think we're ready to, to wrap these. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in this foil pan.
and uh, wrap them with foil and then stick them back in the smoker. We do this to, to help hold the moisture in. Um, we'll uh, throw in some butter. And that reminds me, I forgot to grab the butter before I did this. So I will have to go grab that in just a second. But, uh, These insulated gloves are amazing. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take I'm gonna put some I'm gonna put some butter on top of this, a little brown sugar, and then cover it with foil. Alright, so I'm back here. I've got some butter. I'm gonna use probably at least a stick worth. Fat is flavor. Don't, don't worry about it. You're getting plenty of good stuff in here. This is we're using high quality Kerrygold butter as well, so that should probably be plenty there. And we're using some uh, brown sugar. You can use light or dark. Now we're going to cover this with foil and then stick it back on the smoker. By doing it in the tray versus wrapping it in, in foil individually, you can retain some of those juices. In fact, I think I'm going to. Spritz it a little bit to add some of those juices in there. Add a little bit of liquid in the bottom here. But we want to help retain those juices. <coughs> Man, that vinegar. Woo. But uh, we want to keep that moisture in, that fat from the, from the butter and the sugar, and that'll help all break down the meat a little bit more. And while we're here, we're going to go ahead and give the uh, baked beans a nice stir. They look amazing and smell wonderful. All right, and we're going to let this ride for another uh, another hour or so. Check it again and make sure to see what our temps are on inside those uh, the pork butts. We're, we're looking to get an internal temperature of between 200 and 205 there somewhere in there we want all that fat all the collagen any of the silver skin anything that might be inside there just to break down completely we're doing low and slow that way when we go to pull it will pull apart just like pulled pork should so looking forward to it catch you back in just a minute all right so let's check on everything I think we're uh, getting close here. Oh yeah, the beans look really good. Oh yeah, that top layer is a little crusty. Perfect. It's thickened up. And we'll pull those off. Those are definitely good to go. All right, well, let's check our temperature on our uh, pork. Well, it goes in nice and smooth. Right around 200. 
Well, that one was really smooth. That one's 198. Okay, well, I think I'm gonna pull these off and let them start resting. I think we're right at that temperature where they'll they'll pull apart really well. Um, but we pull them off and let them rest for a little bit, and then we will come back to start pulling them to pull it pull it off the grill, let it rest, and then we'll pull it. Got it. All right, so I've uh, been resting. I've also uh, cut the, the trussing uh, strings off that we have. We're holding it all together. And this stuff looks super tender and juicy. So we're gonna go with the, the Honey Hog Hot. We'll start just, just, come on, come on. Really? Oh, oh, oh no. It's just dissolving in my hands. Oh no. This feels kind of creepy too. I feel dirty. But look at that right there. Oh. Oh, right. Well, let's let's dive in here. Look at some of this the color on the area. You got some good smoke ring on it. Pulling apart really, really well. Let's get let's get a taste. See, that looks like a good piece. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Some of that crust. Mm. It's not even super spicy at all. It's honey hog hot. It's got like just a little hint of heat to it. Really nice. Let's check out this this one over here. Oh, oh no! It's doing the same thing. Oh no! What are we gonna do? I guess we'll have to make barbecue sandwiches out of all this. Oh no! Oh man. Okay. Taste test on this one. It's still really hot. Mm. Oh. That's really good. All right. Well, I'm going to come back with you. Make a few sliders and we'll try this out for real on a sandwich. All right, so we got them all plated up now. I don't know if, don't know if we can, if my camera operator can turn it down and zoom in a little bit on the on it. But what I did was I did two separate batches. This is uh, sweet Hawaiian uh, sliders, and this is sweet Hawaiian onion buns. Um, but I did this side with the uh, the honey hot, and I used some uh, grill your ass off. Hellfire honey habanero barbecue sauce, and then on these two I used uh, sweet baby rays, um, and then I put a pickle on each of them because you know barbecue needs pickle, and then I got the baked beans right here. So I want to do a taste test real quick. I'm gonna taste these baked beans. We've already tasted the meat. We know the meat's good. Let's taste these baked beans. Hmm. It's got a little bit of a kick to it because we added the honey hot in with it. It's got lots of good sweetness as well. So you got a hot and sweet. And of course, you got plenty of bacon in there. You'll get a bacon in almost every every spoonful. So we got a little bit of salty and savory. Mm. That's a meal in itself. All right, but now the main event. I want to try. This hot one with some of this habanero. Mm. Oh. It's got the crunch from the pickle. It's got the heat. Woo. Man, that's good. Oh, and that you can taste a little hint of the onion in the bun. You got a sweetness in the in the bread as well. Oh. 
just a really good sandwich. Wow. That's really good. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this slider right here. all sweet and savory right there. What's not to love? Oh my goodness. Tender meat, pickle, sweet barbecue sauce, sweet Hawaiian bun. I don't know what the kids are going to eat. It's not going to make it to them. Mm. Oh my goodness. All right, well, I know what I'm going to be doing for the next half hour. I'm going to be devouring all of this stuff. Well, thank you for coming along with us today for this cook. It's a long process to cook this pulled pork. But don't take it for granted. Sometimes the best things take the most time. And when you put love into it, you never know what it can do for somebody else. So thanks for being with us. If you have a story that you want to share, comment below, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.